Fulio was shot and killed on June 23, 2024, in a well-planned ambush at a Holiday Inn in Tampa. Since his death, things have gotten really strange. Fulio's Instagram account has been dropping wild content like this to this. Hey, this Fulio, man. Go follow my people Fuel Pack, man. I'm gonna put their app below and I'm gonna put their telling link right up. Now, word on the street is that Fulio sent a letter to Yungin Ace asking him to end his life. In this video, we're diving into all these different theories and seeing if any of them actually hold water. Is the letter real? Ever since Fulio's death, theories have been flying left and right. We've heard everything from how he was killed to why he was killed, and even if he was killed at all. But the wildest theory making the rounds is the sensational claim that Fulio sent a letter to Youngin Ace asking him to kill him. Is this even possible? Fulio and Youngin Ace ain't friends, not by a long shot. These two have been locked in one of the deadliest feuds in hip-hop history. This beef didn't just pop up out of nowhere. It's got deep roots that trace back to the early days of their respective gangs and the sparks that ignited this fiery rivalry. On one side, we've got KTA, which stands for Kill Them All. This alliance includes several gangs from North Jacksonville, like Six Block, YNR, and Vontaland. KTA is closely associated with Fulio, whose real name is Charles Jones. Fulio started making a name for himself in the streets and the music scene at a very young age. By the time he was just 15, he had already been targeted in a shooting. When I got shot, my hip popped out of place and I couldn't run no more. I fell straight to the ground and started crawling. It probably was like three houses in a row. The middle house, I crawled to the yard, and there was a lady sitting on the porch. I was like, I'm shot, I'm shot, man. She was like, I don't give a fuck, get the fuck out of my yard. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm 15 years old going through this shit. This harrowing experience led many to believe it fueled his determination to rise in the ranks, especially within the KTA gang. On the other side of the feud is ATK, which stands for Ace's Top Killers. This alliance includes gangs like NHG, No Hospital Gang, YG, Rollway, and Backstreet, and is led by Yungin Ace, born Keonta Bullard. Yungin Ace and his crew started gaining prominence around the mid-2010s, with ATK becoming more well-known in recent years. The name ATK itself is a chilling acronym that stands for ACE's Top Killers, Aim to Kill, and Simply Attack. The initial spark that ignited the deadly feud between KTA and ATK can be traced back to 2017. It all began when a member of ATK known as Trey Shorty was allegedly robbed by a YNR member named Tony Cho. Seeking retaliation, Trey Shorty decided to target a KTA member's home. This member was Zion Brown, also known as Tweaky Jit, who happened to be Fulio's cousin. Trey Shorty gained access to Zion's house and unleashed a hail of bullets, gunning down Zion and his two little sisters, age 9 and 16. Zion was pronounced dead on the scene while his sisters miraculously survived. Trey Shorty was arrested, charged, and sentenced to life in prison for the triple shooting. The death of Zion had a profound impact on Fulio. The murder of his cousin Zion ignited a full-blown war between KTA and ATK, with both sides seeking revenge for their fallen members. In 2018, the feud escalated to new heights. On the night of June 5, 2018, Ace, his younger brother Trayvon Bullard, and their friends Royale Devon Smith Jr. and Jacob Kobe Groover decided to mark the occasion with a birthday dinner. The group chose to dine at a local restaurant near the St. John's Town Center in Jacksonville, Florida, a popular spot known for its vibrant atmosphere and variety of dining options. The evening started on a high note filled with laughter and good food. For Ace and his brothers, it was a rare moment of respite from the pressures and dangers of their everyday lives. As the group left the restaurant and headed home, they were unaware that danger was lurking nearby. Unknown to them, a car had been trailing them, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The attackers, driven by motives that remain unclear, were determined to carry out a brutal and deadly ambush. The car carrying Young Gein Ace, Trayvon Bullard, Royale Devon Smith Jr., and Jacoby Groover was traveling along Town Center Parkway when the assailants made their move. In a matter of seconds, the peaceful night was shattered by the deafening sound of gunfire. The attackers unleashed a hail of bullets, riddling the vehicle with gunshots. Trayvon Bullard, Royale Devon Smith Jr., and Jacoby Groover were all struck by the gunfire and succumbed to their injuries at the scene. Yungin Ace was found in critical condition with 13 to 14 bullet wounds and eight bullets still lodged within him. The severity of his injuries required immediate medical attention and he was rushed to the hospital where doctors worked tirelessly to save his life. Ace survived but was arrested in the hospital for breaching his probation. Following this violent attack, Fulio and other KTA members took to social media to taunt Yungin Ace and his crew. Fulio and his squad went as far as posing disrespectfully at the gravesite of Royale Devon Smith Jr. Taking photos 
photos that showed them placing their shoes on the grave marker, making obscene gestures, and mimicking guns with their hands. When Ace was released from prison, he vowed revenge, promising that KTA members would pay for the murders. The feud continued to escalate, with both sides engaging in deadly retaliations. In July 2018, a respected KTA member named Trey D was shot dead by rival gang members at the Out East reunion. The alleged killers were thought to be affiliated with ATK. The war within the streets of Jacksonville began to gain mainstream attention as young rappers from both sides started gaining success in the music scene. In August 2018, KTA members from Six Block clapped back hard by taking out a prominent member of 1200, known as Spaz, at a Reigns High School football game. Spaz was tight with Spinabins and Wapa Wit De Choppa, all affiliates of the ATK gang. After that hit, KTA set their sights on another big ATK player, Boss Goon. Willie Addison, known to many as Boss Goon, was born and brought up in the tough streets of Jacksonville. From a young age, he was pulled into the urban underworld and quickly made a name for himself. By his early 20s, Boss Goon had become a prominent figure in the gang scene, known for his fearlessness and street smarts. In 2010, Boss Goon's life took a dramatic turn when he faced the court on serious charges, including taking someone's life in possession of a firearm. Despite the gravity of these accusations, he managed to overcome this legal hurdle when the charges were eventually dropped. However, his brush with the law was far from over. Later that same year, he was found guilty of burglary and perjury, leading to a six-year prison sentence. With additional cases and trials, Boss Goon ended up spending a total of 10 years behind bars. In June 2018, after serving a decade in prison, Boss Goon was finally a free man, but his release immediately made him a target for assassination. On January 5th, 2019, just 10 days before his death, he posted a flyer on Facebook for an event where he would be performing live on January 15th at the Paradise Gentlemen's Club. On the night of January 15th, Boss Goon arrived at the Paradise Gentlemen's Club with his family and friends, ready to put on a show. He took the stage, rapping with passion and energy, looking happy as he performed for the crowd. The night seemed to be going smoothly, but unbeknownst to him, his rivals had been keeping a close eye on his location. Around Around 2 a.m. as the event was winding down, Boss Goon, his father, brother, and three others entered into a silver Chevy Tahoe with his father behind the wheel. They drove about six miles to Spring Park Road on Emerson Street in the Inglewood area of Jacksonville. What happened next was caught on surveillance footage and marked the tragic climax of Boss Goon's story. A silver SUV followed by two cars sped past the car park where Boss Goon and his family were sitting in their vehicle. Out of nowhere, the assailants unleashed a hail of bullets on the Tahoe, firing over a hundred rounds. Boss Goon, seated in the front passenger seat, took the brunt of the attack. He was hit multiple times and tragically succumbed to his injury. ATK got their revenge by targeting Fulio's brother, Bibby, known as Adrian Gaynor Jr. Bibby was a 16-year-old who, through his relationship with Fulio, was affiliated with the KTA gang. On February 25th, 2019, Bibby's day began like any other as he went to school. However, after school, he broke from his usual routine. Around 2.30 p.m., Bibby headed to the Hilltop Village apartment complex on West 45th Street to visit a friend. This complex was a known hotspot for gang activity and Bibby's presence did not go unnoticed. Unbeknownst to him, masked suspects were already on his trail waiting for the right moment to strike. As Bibby walked through the parking lot of the apartment complex, the suspects who had been lying in wait sprang into action. Eyewitnesses describe a chaotic scene as the masked assailants chased Bibby through the lot. The sound of gunfire erupted, echoing through the complex like a war zone. It sounded like it was Iraq out here, like multiple guns, like from different guns. Bibby tried to escape, but the assailants were relentless. They chased him to the back of the parking lot where he was cornered. Bibby was shot at least once during the chase. Residents flooded 911 with calls, reporting the sounds of gunfire and chaos. When officers arrived, they found Bibby lying in a pool of blood, having succumbed to his injury. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office quickly launched an investigation into Bibby's murder. Detectives started piecing together the events, interviewing witnesses, and gathering evidence. The investigation pointed to Hakeem Robinson, better known as the rapper K. So, and his ties to the ATK gang. Shu had a ruthless reputation, often flaunting his gang activities on social media. Detectives discovered that Chu had been bragging online about Bibby's murder, posting videos and photos mocking Bibby's death. This killing was rumored to be retaliation for the tragic death of Queso's brother, Boss Goon. Two years after the crime, Queso was charged with Bibby's murder, though he was already in jail for killing another KTA member known as Lil Buck. The cycle of violence just kept spinning, with both sides seeking revenge for their fallen comrades. Fulio and Young Ace used their music to taunt and provoke each other, turning their beef into a public spectacle. In 2021, ATK members 
dropped one of the most disrespectful drill tracks ever, titled Who I Smoke. The song sampled Vanessa Carlton's 2002 hit A Thousand Miles and had a chorus that dissed four dead six block KTA members, including Bibby. The track blew up, gaining millions of views and putting the Jacksonville beef on the national radar. Fulio clapped back with his own disrespectful track, When I See You, sampling Fantasia's song of the same name. In the music video, Fulio danced on graves and referenced the 2018 quadruple shooting that took Jungin Ace's three friends. This track also racked up millions of views, adding more fuel to the deadly feud that ultimately led to Fulio's murder. Fulio's murder. Rapper Charles Jones, known as Julio Fulio, shot and killed in Tampa. Fulio was ambushed and shot at a Holiday Inn on June 23rd. Leaked surveillance footage reveals a meticulously planned attack that unfolded in the shared parking lot of the Hilton and Holiday Inn. The video starts with the shooters already in position, having set themselves up to make sure the attack went off smoothly. There were three gunmen in total, each taking a key spot around the vehicle, one in front, one by the side, and another shooting from behind. The attackers were masked, hiding their identities, and one of them carried what looked like a semi-automatic rifle. Fulio, seated in the passenger seat, immediately tried to react. In a desperate move to avoid the hail of bullets, he attempted to jump to the back seat. However, the attackers were relentless. The shooter on the side of the car seemed to know exactly where Fulio was seated focusing his fire on the left side of the vehicle. The precision of the shot suggests a well-planned attack, with the gunman having prior knowledge of Fulio's position in the car. The car, now under heavy fire, hit a curb as the driver attempted to speed around a corner to dodge the bullet. The footage captures the chaos inside the vehicle, with passengers scrambling for cover. Along with the leaked video, a hotel employee who saw the incident also shared their account online. They mentioned that Fulio didn't check in himself. He wasn't the one that checked himself in. Another guy did. It was him, two guys, and some females. And after that, she said they went back to the room, not to the room, to the lobby thing outside. They got in the car. I'm outside at this point. The hotel worker, who was outside getting ready for her shift, observed them from a distance. I'm out there. They've been out there for a while. I don't know who told him to pull off, but when he pulled off, I'm trying not to cry. When he pulled off, that's when all shit broke loose. Gunshots rang out, shattering the peaceful evening and plunging the hotel into a state of panic. The hotel worker, who was still outside, found herself ducking for cover, trying to avoid getting hit by stray bullets. They shoot, they shoot, they shoot. We, I'm ducking, everybody's ducking. The people that out there, we ducking, trying to cover, because the people out. The hotel worker described it as a nightmare, something she had never experienced before. Within minutes, the police arrived on the scene, but the damage had already been done. Fulio was pronounced dead at the scene, and the hotel worker, along with her colleagues, was left to pick up the pieces. The FBI got involved, questioning everyone at the hotel to piece together what had happened. The hotel worker revealed that Fulio's attackers had been planning the hit for a while. They had visited the hotel days before the incident, scoping out the place. According to the worker, they were trying to find out if any party was scheduled for that day. Somebody came up there earlier that day to see have he been checked in. See have anybody checked in for they, this what they told her. And see how anybody checked in for um, they party uh, tonight. The hotel worker also alleged that the attack on Fulio was a paid hit involving multiple gangs. It's a paid hit. This a paid hit. It's not no regular old shootout. Somebody paid a couple of gangs. It's not just one. It's multiples. It's not just one gang. It's multiple people involved in this the hotel worker's testimony also raised questions about the involvement of law enforcement. She mentioned that the police arrived suspiciously quickly, leading some to believe that they might have had prior knowledge of the attack. Although the police have yet to acknowledge the leaked video, they have been actively working to address the situation and prevent further violence. In the immediate aftermath, the Tampa Police Department hosted a town hall meeting on June 24th to discuss the recent surge in violence and to provide updates on the ongoing investigation into Fulio's murder. Tampa Police Chief Lee Burkaw assured the community that they were making significant progress in the case. I'm working very closely with the Jacksonville Sheriff. I spoke to him today. I've spoken to the statewide prosecutor. I've spoken to our prosecutor. I've spoken to the FBI and the ATF. And everybody is working together to ensure that we can make an arrest and hold those accountable that are coming into our city and committing these violent crimes. Tampa Police Chief also revealed they are close to making an arrest. And I can guarantee you that we're going to be following up and making arrests in that case. And they're not stopping there. They're also monitoring social media accounts closely. Are you doing 
looking at the social media aspect? Absolutely. We're looking at the social media. We're working with our Jacksonville partners and getting intelligence on that. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, led by Sheriff T.K. Waters, has also been putting in work. They've been on high alert for any potential retaliation between rival groups. Sheriff Waters emphasized that they will not tolerate any acts of retribution or revenge, stating, we're going to keep them off balance. So you can't come in here and start shooting up neighborhoods, cities, and cars and doing whatever you want to do. In a recent press conference, Sheriff Waters hinted that the police would be looking into rap videos and songs as part of their investigation. I've, I've never seen so much devaluing of human life. You know, it's like it's like it's fun. And they talk about it in, uh, in, in rap videos and songs and it's just doesn't make any sense. As the investigation into Fulio's murder continues, it's clear that there is much mystery surrounding it. The meticulous planning, the involvement of multiple gangs, and the overall drama around Fulio's death point to a deeper, more complex situation. It's no wonder fans have run wild with theories, including the claim that Fulio sent a letter to Yungin Ace requesting his own murder. However, this isn't the only theory circulating. Another popular belief among fans is that Fulio might have staged his death and is still alive. Did Fulio stage his death? The circumstances and events that led Fulio to the hotel where he met his brutal end have left many people suspicious. The lead up to Fulio's death began in the days before June 21st, 2024, Fulio's birthday. On June 14th, Fulio took to Instagram to announce his highly anticipated birthday festivities. The post read, Tampa, Florida, my Airbnb pool party June 21st, DM and me for address, and my official birthday party June 22nd at Club Teasers. Club address, 9700 North Nebraska Avenue, Tampa, Florida, pull up. This was unusual for his fans because Fulio rarely revealed his location publicly. Over the years, Fulio had made many enemies due to his involvement in the KTA gang, making him a target for his rivals. In July 2020, he was involved in a shooting incident in Texas. In the year after, he survived an attack where it was alleged that 100 bullets were fired at him as he stepped out of a recording studio, sustaining a slight injury when a bullet grazed his leg. In another particularly harrowing incident, Fulio suffered a serious gunshot wound and broke several bones in his foot after being attacked attacked by assailants while departing from a gas station near Paxson School for advanced studies. Following surgeries conducted at a hospital in Jacksonville, he sued the hospital for allegedly revealing his location. Fulio revealing his location was strange, almost like he wanted his rivals to know where he was. This unusual behavior led fans to speculate that something more might be going on. Could Fulio have been setting the stage for his own disappearance? On his birthday, he was posting everything about the event. He even went as far as inviting fans to the party. The pool party started the day at 5, 6 o'clock. You already got the address. Pull up, man. You got the address. Pull up. If you need the address, them, you're right now. The pool party start at 5, 6 o'clock. And when the party started, he shared live updates, showing everything happening at the event. Uh, appreciate everybody popping out for my birthday. You know what I'm saying? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Everybody got their shot. Put their shot in the air, man. Okay, David. Everybody take this shit on three, man. One, two, three. Fulio even posted when the Airbnb party was canceled after the police arrived. The landlord had called the authority, concerned about the large gathering and potential noise and damage. Forced to leave the property, Fulio didn't stop there. He shared his next location by posting a flyer for a nearby club where the party would continue. The poster included the club's address, once again revealing his location to the world. The idea that he was posting every detail of his movements has only fueled the theory that he might have staged his death and could still be alive. Adding to this speculation is the fact the fact that Fulio's Instagram has remained active even days after his death. The intrigue surrounding Fulio's Instagram kicked off on June 28, 2024, just six days after his reported death. While fans and the hip-hop community were still mourning, Fulio's Instagram account began posting some bizarre and eerie content. One post that left everyone in shock featured a promo video that appeared to show Fulio himself promoting a brand. Hey, this Fulio, man. Go follow my people Fuel Packs, man. I'm going to put their app below and I'm going to put their telelink right there. But that wasn't the only haunting thing happening. The person using Fulio's account left a cryptic comment on a post by Yungin Ace, Fulio's biggest rival. Ace had shared a link to the music video for Game Over, one of his most intense diss tracks aimed at Fulio. The comment from Fulio's account was just a single trash can emoji. Many people saw this as a sign that Fulio was alive and planning a strategic comeback against his op, like Yungin Ace and the ATK gang. Yungin Ace, always ready for a showdown, 
down, noticed the comment right away. He clapped back quick, saying, you still messing with me, dude, and added two laughing emojis. Then in a surprising twist, he wrote, I love you for Eva. Given how vicious his diss tracks against Fulio were, that love was definitely sarcastic. The mystery surrounding Fulio's death took another twist on June 30th, when someone uploaded a No Jumper interview featuring the late rapper to his account. The video came with an eerie message, I'll never die, I'm a demigod, paired with a devil emoji. Uh, bro, I'm gonna be here for sure, I ain't gonna know it. I'm a demigod, man, you can't get me. This strange post left fans even more puzzled and added to the speculation that Fulio might still be alive. Fans were quick to voice their skepticism. Bro confusing everybody like, are you dead or what's it? One fan commented. Another wrote, I won't believe he's dead until I see a funeral. On July 2nd, Fulio's Instagram account dropped another wild video. This time, it showed Fulio dressed as The Undertaker, the WWE wrestler known for playing dead before rising again. The short clip had a caption that read, my grandma does voodoo, hinting that he might come back from the dead or that he was untouchable. This cryptic message only added to the mystery, making fans question if Fulio was really gone or just pulling off an elaborate stunt. The situation got even creepier when a pic of Fulio's alleged killer surfaced online. The account, supposedly run by Fulio, dropped a comment on it saying demigod. On July 4th, the account posted an ominous Instagram story again. The post included a close-up photo of Fulio's diamond-encrusted watch and bracelet, paired with the following message. The life of a demigod, you can never kill a demigod. This chilling declaration continued to fuel the speculation and left fans wondering about Fulio's true fate. The theory gained even more traction when a video surfaced online, allegedly showing Fulio's girlfriend twerking at a party. The video quickly went viral, flooding social media with comments and speculation. Some believe Fulio was alive, arguing that she wouldn't be out dancing if he were truly dead. Others even speculated that Fulio was at the party with her. Amidst the chaos, Fulio's girlfriend decided to break her silence. She took to social media to address the accusations head on, vehemently denying that the woman in the video was her. In a post, she wrote, I wish y'all leave me the fuck alone. That's not even me. For once, for two, not that it's any of y'all businesses, but I spend most of my days in a room crying in the damn dark. His family got me out the house and my mind on other stuff. I said, I'm done grieving on here. Y'all literally clown me all day every day because my boyfriend dead. I see the comments and the tags and DMs. Y'all blame me for every damn thing too. And it's just something to talk about for y'all. This is my real life. Y'all so insensitive. Go to hell. I don't care and stop sending me the Reddit. This post confirms Fulio is actually dead. But the truth is these different theories will continue to swirl for a while. Until the real story comes out, we might never know what truly happened. How about you? What do you think about all these theories? Leave a comment comment below and let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on one of the boxes playing on your screen to watch more similar content.